What's up, YouTube guys? It's Courtney going live. What's up, guys? Get my little tripod set up. Here we go. What's up, YouTube? Courtney, get this thing positioned right. Show you my other one. Here we go. Sup, 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 YouTube. Sup, guys. I'm about to uh, be discussing some things tonight. And uh, the uh, topic title of this video is basically building your business with value instead of price. Uh, today I went to TCS. I got some services done on my van. Um, got a chance to meet a uh, new, a uh, few new people that I never met before in the industry. I also met a uh, couple that's a part of the Cleaners Connect community. Uh, so that was good to meet, you know, uh, some of the local colleagues. Uh, so I went up to TCS today. Just got a little service done. Uh, got the oil changed. Got the uh, burner ring cleaned out. Uh, also. Uh, got the um, just some more little eyes and ends just to keep the machine running properly, uh, so I can you know get the best job as possible during my cleaning. How you guys doing? Hey, janitorial startup, startup. How you doing, man? So, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it's just that time of the year, guys. A lot of cleaners or. Um, you know, saying they're slow and uh, just trying to find a way to get customers, uh, trying to find a way to keep the phones ringing. Um, and again, you know, guys, that do come, that comes with time. Uh, you know, it's not going to happen over the not overnight. You're not going to, uh, it's not going to be a overnight success. It takes time, but you want to get on the right track. Uh, to build that success for your business in your way. So yeah, uh, um, last night on Cleaners Connect, man, it was a uh, some pretty good shows last night. We had my buddy Alex uh, Notch and uh, Charlie McBride. They're both out of Dallas, Texas. So they did a good video last night. If you guys are members of Cleaners Connect, you can check it out. If not, you can join Cleaners Connect and you can check out these. Uh, these are uh, very helpful videos about different business topics. Those guys are usually touching on subjects, um, commercial. Uh, Charlie does a lot of commercial. Uh, so it can definitely help out a lot of you guys who are in the commercial side of the business. Me, as you guys see, I'm fully residential. I love residential. Uh, since I was in this, since I got in this industry, I've been able to uh, put my feet in a lot of different parts of the business um from you know uh commercial residential apartments hotels um uh, repairs dying um all kind of cleaning methods so i work for apartment complex i work for the bait and switch companies i work for the name brand companies so i think that's one thing that has basically allowed me um to choose which path i want to go down when I started my own business, and that's why I chose the residential side, uh, because I'm, I, you know, uh, I'm more of a people's person. So I, uh, I love to talk to my customers. I love to engage with my customers uh, and build relationships. Um, you know, so usually when you're doing janitorial or commercial, you're usually in a building by yourself. No one's there. Um, and, and, and for me and my personality, that wouldn't be a good match um, because you know. I can go clean the house, but I'll probably spend 20, 30 minutes just talking to the customer uh, about anything, you know, that we can uh, relate to. So that's one thing that has definitely helped my business is being able to, um, you know, just relate with my customers and build up a uh, good relationship with my customers in my community. 
So again, guys, I wanted to do a video. Uh, you can see I have my whiteboard around me. Uh, so again, today when I went to TCS, they had a class going on there today. It was a class for commercial dry out something. I think it was commercial. It was something it was something to do with commercial buildings, and it was a class. It was a uh, pretty packed, looked like it was slammed out, sold out, and then just you know really opened up my eyes to see all those guys in there in that classroom. And when I seen all those guys in that class, it really, you know, again, allowed me to, you know, really open up my mind to why a lot of people do not build success or not, they are not successful in their business. And the reason why is that they build no value. They build no value for their business. So when I seen those guys in the class getting educated uh, in their uh, part of their business, you know, it showed me that what they were doing, they were getting educated and they were building value, you know, not only for their business, but also for themselves. And that's a lot of, uh, that's, that's one of the biggest problems in business is that a lot of us, you know, we get the wrong things as value. Uh, for example, just like this industry, I see it all the time. Uh, guys get equipment, they get truck mounts, portables, whatever. And that's all they see is the equipment. That's all they see. They get a piece of equipment and that's all the value they have. That's all the value they have. They have no education, no knowledge, uh, no experience, uh, no customer service skills, nothing that makes their business stick out. Because uh, uh, again, guys, equipment does not bring value. It's just a tool. You know, I can go to Home Depot right now, right now by some of the best equipment that they can offer. But does that make me valuable in uh, uh, construction? No, it doesn't. I just have the tools. So what we need to focus on is that when you get into business and you want to separate yourself from what we could consider the competition, uh, competitors, that's why I don't believe in competition. You hear me say it all the time. That's why I say I don't have competitors because I don't. I have found a way to uh, separate myself from every other company in my area okay so i don't have competition because i've built value in my business model so as you see right here guys building business with value instead of price that's what most cleaners do when they get into this business they have no value so the only thing they can rely on is price and usually it's not a high price it's a low price. They start being very competitive. Um, and I know this because I used to be just like this, guys. When I first started, I was just like this. I always, you know, if someone did it for 99, I can do it for 89. If someone did it for 79, I can do it for 69. And again, it gets you nowhere. Um, it just basically either puts you out of business or in my situation, luckily, um, uh, from the grace of God, I was able to start over because of my passion of the business. So we want to focus on in our business, okay, not in anyone else's business, in our business, how to build value in our business. And guys, we done so many ways. It doesn't have. There's no one way to build value. There's no one way. So many ways you can build value in your business. And one of the ways I've built uh, value in my business is uh, education, which a lot of people in business lack education. Um, Watcher say I remember back in the day. Yep, for down. Yep. So um, education, guys, and that's why I put education first because that's what that that is what most. Oh. Hold on, guys. Let me get this dog. This is Chloe, and she's getting out. 
Yeah. All right, guys, so I'm back. So, um, the first word that I put up was education, because that's what smoke that, that that is exactly what most business owners lack when they get into business education, and when you have no education, everything else that comes with education. It cannot follow. So you have to basically go to the most important thing of building a business is education. No one can build anything if they're not educated to build it. You can't build a house. You can't make a car. You can't do anything, guys, unless you're educated. If you're not educated, if you're literate to it, you cannot do it. And it's okay if that's not something that you do. But if you get into business, you need to be educated in any form of your business. Whatever business you are uh, trying to get into, you're trying to uh, tap into, you need to be educated in that business. So that's what, you know, again, when I seen those guys up there at TCS today and I seen that classroom was packed, I said those guys are in that classroom for a reason and a very valuable reason. They're building business value okay they're not in there talking about how can we be the cheapest how can we do it the cheapest they're in there teaching themselves learning how they can do it the right way and also make a great living and a great profit doing it so once we become educated guys in what we do then the second word problem solvers now you're a problem solver that's what we do people when you go to a doctor, you are going to a doctor for a reason to solve your problem. And most people, we overlook these things. We don't understand that most of the things that we we do it because we need a problem solved. It was about four o'clock today. I haven't eaten all day. I was very hungry. I went to Delhi, got me a sandwich, a cup of soup. Why? Because I was hungry. I needed to solve my problem of being hungry. So I went to a place that offered food and I bought food. Okay. In exchange, they got my funds. It happens. That's all we do every day, guys, is exchange funds for products or services. It's, it's just the way the world works. So again, when we learn how to become problem solvers, in our business, now we don't have to focus so much on the price. Because Mrs. Jones will call me tomorrow and say, Courtney, my daughter threw up in the carpet. I have vomit in my carpet. Her, her main focus, guys, is not how much it's going to be. Her main focus is, can I solve her problem? Okay. How, how, how quick can you get out here? Can you make this convenient for me? That's what Miss Jones is focusing on. She's not focusing on, Courtney, can you do it for $50? Because uh, somebody else told me $60. No. So once we understand that, and once we understand that every customer does not think that way, now, guys, we can follow what really matters instead of price. So when you get into business and all you can do is offer a price, guys, it gets you nowhere, especially us as service providers, because there's so much that comes with it. You know, there's a lot of things that a lot of people don't understand in business. You have products and you have services, and sometimes we confuse them with one another. OK, that's why some guys say I want to be the cheapest. Some guys say I want to be the Walmart of carpet cleaning. You can't be the Walmart of carpet cleaning. You want to have one one truck. How can you be the Walmart of carpet cleaning? Some guys say I want to be the McDonald's. How can you be? Why would you even bring those two into a, a conversation? This is not this is not a restaurant. This is not fast food chain. This is a service. I, I, there's nothing about McDonald's that has anything to do with the service industry. Nothing. People go to McDonald's because it's convenient. 
People don't call carpet cleaners because it's convenient. People call carpet cleaners because they need a problem solved. They need their carpets clean. They have urine in their carpet. Someone cut themselves. Now blood is all over the carpet. They want to get a house sold. They need the house to look good. They're moving out of a house. They want their deposit back. Okay, that, that has nothing to do with McDonald's, has nothing to do with Walmart. Okay, so once we understand these things, guys, then everything else will follow. You educate yourself, you become a problem solver. Now you have to have Facebook ads or Google. Uh, again, Corey Hunter, um, you guys can ask me questions along as uh, along, you know, during the video. Uh, his questions was, should you pay for Facebook ads or Google? Both. Both. Try both of them. OK, because I, I can't sit here and tell you which one is right or wrong because they both work because people do it every day. Now, I would tell you don't do yellow pages or YP. Why? Because no one does it. At, at least to my knowledge, I don't see anyone doing it. But people do AdWords every day. I grew my business uh, I, um, using AdWords. Now I do Facebook. So they both work. Uh, but again, a lot of that is going to come to, and that's another subject we can talk about when it comes to marketing, is how is your online presence? Again, what are you offering to your customers? I'll give you a, a quick tip for you. When I did AdWords, I looked at everybody else that was doing AdWords. And what I did, I separated myself from everybody else. How did I do that? When everybody else was doing AdWords, they were all focusing on what I'm talking about now, price. That's the only thing that they can focus on. No, nothing valuable about their ad, their website, or their company. So what I did, I built value. I used key terms um, that basically brought value to my business. 100% uh, money back guarantee. Uh, kid, and, uh, kid and pet safe friendly. Um, it was some more uh, state of the art equipment. Uh, no harsh cleaning agents. Uh, what else? Uh, you know, five star rated. So I used different key terms to separate myself from all the other companies. And again, it worked for me because I found a way to build value in my ad and also my company instead of just focusing on the price. So I will say this is that both of them work. It's just a tool of marketing, it's just to market um, your company and get exposure, get impressions, get people to see who you are. But the rest of it is really going to fall back on you. How do people look at your business? How do, when someone sees your ad, when someone sees your website, what are they really seeing? You know, and again, a lot of this goes back to what I'm talking about now, building building your business with value instead of price. Because again, there's always going to be someone cheaper. You do it for $20 a room. Trust me, there's somebody that they would do it for $15 a room. And trust me, there's somebody out there that will do it for $10 a room. And it's sad to say that with it being 2019, but you have a lot of people that do that. Why? Because they have no value in their business. You know, if you're educated, if you're educated in this business, you all you already know you can you can't even run a business focusing on the price. So, um, so that's the only advice I can give you right now is yes, both of them work. Um, and what I would do, I always tell guys is you need to have three, at least three, um, ways of marketing, you know, especially when you're starting out because you're trying to get customers, you're buying customers. Um, you just don't want to depend on one way of marketing. You need at least three. Uh, what I did when I was, uh, growing my business, I had yp.com. I had Google at the same time I was working on my SEO and also my Google local maps listing, building up my reviews. So my uh, local listing could grow uh, right now is number one in my area. Uh, also, I'm number one organically in my area, but that part takes time. But the paid part was AdWords, YP.com. And also, I used to go put out little road signs throughout the neighborhood. So those were my three sources of marketing, um, uh, which helped build my business. Now, my business is really, I, my business now is just strictly repeats and referrals. 
Uh, Instagram, I can't really say I don't. I, I am on Instagram. I use Instagram mostly just for showing pictures and videos. Uh, but as marketing, I don't know. Uh, you might have to dig deeper or ask someone who does Instagram. Now, I will say I do have some members on Cleaners Connect that say they do get leads and get jobs from Instagram. How they're doing that, I don't know. Um, but like I said, now that my business is mostly repeats and referrals, I don't have to focus on Instagram or any other source of marketing to get customers. So, um, so, so guys, so once you you got the education, you know, now you're a problem solver. Customer service. How's your customer service skills? When when customers call you, you know, I've had customers that have called me and told me. And book the appointment with me. And then once they book the appointment with me, and even the customers when I get into their home, um, they had bad experiences with the last uh, the last company. And usually it's not even the cleaning, it's just the customer service skills. Your customer service skills, guys, can really make or break you in this business. Um, there was a there was a guy that I used to know, and um uh, he had a very, very strong accent. And, you know, I, I never had the courage to tell him, you know, that because I really believed it, that he needed to hire a, 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 a um, receptionist, someone to answer his phone for him. Um, because, again, this is the real world. And I know sometimes we will, we hate to criticize uh, or we hate to say these things, but these things are real. But his asset was so strong. I can not even understand him. So I'm thinking to myself, if I can't understand 80% of what comes out of your mouth, how can your customers understand it? So it goes back to your customer service. How, how, how do people view your business? How do people uh, relate to you with your customer service skills? I've had customers, I had a customer call me one time, said he called a name brand company. He said, when I was on the phone booking the appointment, for some reason, I just felt like they didn't want my business. He said the guy was so dry and it's like he can care less if I use their services. So I just hung up the phone and I called you. So, guys, you have to understand, again, your customer service skills can really make or break how your potential customers look at your business. When you get into the customer's homes, you still have to have... Um, some good customer service skills. How do you talk to your customers? How do you relate to your customers? How do you relate to pro to their problems? Because again, you know, when you're in the house, looking customers in the eyes, listening to the customers. Don't try to over talk your customers. You need to listen to your customers, see what they're saying, you know, because again, they have you there for a reason. Especially if they are not just focused on price. So listen to your customers. And, 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 and again, if you lack customer service skills, work on your customer service skills, because again, your customer service skills, guys, can be, to be honest, good customer service skills can really outweigh all this stuff. Good customer service skills, you can, have, you can be a mediocre cleaner, but if you have excellent, top-notch customer service skills, they can take you a long way than someone who's a great cleaner, but have poor customer service skills. It can take you a long way, guys. So your customer service skills is definitely something um, I would focus on in my business because like I said, it can definitely make or break your business. Um, the other thing, guys, is quality. Building quality to your business. Um, you know, and how do you build quality? What do you offer? What, what do you what, what do your customers see when they when they find you, when they call you, when they go to your website? You know, it, 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 does your does your business speak quality? And, and again, guys, it goes back to uh, your presentation, um, the the makeup of your business, your website, your work vehicles, your uniform, you as a person. Do your customer, do you speak quality? Does your business speak quality? Why do you think people go spend two, three, four thousand dollars on a purse? Because of the quality. 
You know, that purse speaks for itself. You know, I, I, I went to restaurants where they have no prices on the menu. They don't have to put prices on the menu. I think that's what they call uh, uh, La Carte, uh, a, 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 something, somewhere, uh, a lot of cart, or I've heard it before. But again, because of, you know, value, they bring value to their business, guys, and also the quality that their business stand for. So that's why people spend the kind of money that they spend on certain things a la carte. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Washington, a la carte. Um, that's the word I was looking for. And um, that's why you go to certain places. You don't even see prices. OK, because, again, whatever product or service that that person is buying, they can, can, can really care less because at the end of the day, guys, people know what they can and can't afford. All right. You know, so when you have quality, when your business speaks quality, you you definitely don't have to focus on the price. The price is usually the last thing that the customer is worried about. So um, someone said a few days ago, I sprayed some proxy spray oil to remove. Yeah, yeah, see if I can see this. Let's bring some proxy oil okay. game. Uh, that's very weird that a proxy, because proxy is really a low grade peroxide. So you say it left a bleach stain. Uh, do you know what kind of carpet it was? Now, if it was a natural carpet, let's say like wool, it could it could have bleached it out. Usually proxy, was it wool? Yeah, somebody just asked him, was it wool? Yeah, that's the same. Say that I was thinking, okay, it's very, I've very rare. I've really never seen any kind of spray and walk away. Uh, yes, oh, yep, that's that's your problem then. Yep, you never, I would never take a risk. So that, that that's the problem. We we hit it right on the nail. It was wool. Um, so yeah, that proxy, uh, because wool is a natural fiber, so that proxy bl basically bleached out the wool. And unfortunately, in this situation, there's nothing you can do about it probably but give the customer work out something with the customer um where uh and you're right washington that goes back to education if you're i, I mean i hate to say it but if you were educated you knew these things you would have known not to put proxy on a natural fiber um if you do put a proxy what i've learned for some of the best people who uh specialize in that one of my good buddies chandler thompson if you have to do any kind of peroxide the only ones that he will recommend is three percent the lowest volume you can get three percent uh, but proxy i think it's like a nine to ten percent that's a pretty uh mild uh volume of peroxide and yes so yeah we hit it dead on the nail washington because i've never seen proxy bleach out synthetic uh fabric so, um, so guys, again, quality, do your business speak quality? Do customers see quality when they see your business? Um, next thing I put on the list is name recognition. Do people recognize you? Do they recognize your name? That's why I always keep my name out. That's why I wrap my van. Um, that's why I keep my names on my uniforms. That's why, uh, I make sure that I'm on uh the search engines for again uh customers looking for my services in the community i had a lady that i uh serviced yesterday she found me on google she said she went to work and she told one of the co-workers that she was having her carpets clean and she asked her who she said i found a company online true Steamers. she said oh true Steamers. i use them too guys it felt very good that customer told me that because again, name recognition. She recognized my name when her, her coworker told her who she was using. So guys, you want to keep her name out there. Okay. That's why I am so against when I see guys don't have their names on their vans. Your van is a moving billboard. Okay. Just now I will say this. I did not wrap my van to get phone calls because I know that um, uh, being realistically realistic, most people are not going to call you from your van. So if your expectations are to get 
calls. Uh, you know, let's say some people think they're going to get a lot of calls from the vans. Do not expect that, guys. If that was true, you wouldn't see companies who have 50, 60 vans going out every day spending millions on TV and radio advertisement. So do not expect a lot of calls from your vans. But what you can expect is name recognition. I have so many customers have told me, Courtney, I've seen your van. I've seen your van going up that downtown Lawrenceville. I've seen your van going through Beaufort. Okay, they recognize me. They recognize my van when they see it and they recognize the name, Truman Steamers. So guys, you want to market your name. You want to make sure customers see you, all right? That's why sometimes when I go out and I eat lunch and I decide to eat lunch in my van, um, if I'm in a parking lot, I won't eat my lunch in the middle of the parking lot. I will eat my lunch at the top of the parking lot close to the main road. And I will park my van sideways. So when all those people are driving by, they will see me. They will see my van. They're recognizing my van. I mean, I only work in a 20, 25 mile radius. So if I'm in these neighborhoods and I'm, and I'm in these you know cities every day, like I am all day, people will start to recognize that van and they will start to recognize the name True Mr. So make sure you have letters on your van. Now, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying you have to go spend three, four, five grand on a wrap. You can go spend five hundred dollars on some nice decals. You know, you can make your van look very professional and very good with decals. OK, um, so don't, just don't, don't think just because, you know, you see certain guys with a fully wrapped van. That's what you have to have. You don't have to have a fully wrapped van. But what you do need, you need your name on your van. You need your phone number on your van. People need to recognize you when they see you, okay? Um, there's nothing like being accused of being a um, a raper uh, van when you're in a neighborhood full of kids. And I know that from my own experience because one time I was in a neighborhood with my all-white van before I... And even if, if you... Let's say if you live in a neighborhood where you can't have... Uh, letters on your vans. Well, get magnetics. Get magnetics and get magnetics that are big enough where people will see them. And you just have to cost, you just have to uh, uh, build that cost into your business of your magnetics falling off. Um, so if you do have to put magnetics on your trucks or your vehicles, make sure you order two or three sets because they're going to fall off. It's just a matter of time. And when they fall off, you want to make sure you have um, some put up for backup where you don't have to order them and wait another week or two for those new magnetics to come in. So when I, I used to live um, in a neighborhood where I, you could not have commercial vehicles on the property. So what I would do, I would have these magnetics and I wasn't talking about the uh, 12 by 18. These were like 24 by 30 magnetics. Um, they were pretty large, and I would put those on and off every day. It was just a part of the job. It was a part of the process, and I did it until, you know, uh, we moved, and now yeah, I didn't have to do that. So make sure you get uh, some kind of name on your van uh, because, again, I was in the neighborhood one time riding, driving around in my all-white van, and there was three little girls and I was looking for an address. I was doing a job for one of my contractors that I still work for to this day. And the three little girls were walking. And I'm here I am in an all-white van with no letters on it. One of the little girls looked at the van. And you know exactly what she said? She said, rape her van. And she started running. So her parents, I will say, uh, her parents taught her very well. The other two girls just walked. But that one girl who said, rape her van, she took off and she started running. Okay. Uh, because obviously her parents taught her, uh, when you see all white vans, get away. So uh, someone said, start up, knock doors. Oh, let me see, guys. Uh, uh, start up, knock doors, hand out quality brochures. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's the way of uh, marketing your business is handing out business cards, brochures. 
I've seen a guy here um, in California that said that that's how he markets his business is just standing in front of Home Depots and just handing out his business cards. Um, and again, it's a way of marketing. It's a way of uh, letting people know what you do in the community. I've never done that. Um, I, would, I would rather find better ways to do it, um, to spare my time instead of sitting in front of a, a, a home improvement store, passing out brochures and uh, business cards. But at the same time, you know, again, I'm not going to knock it because it, you, it is a way of marketing. Uh, so that's why we do have so many ways of marketing and we have to choose uh, which ways work best for us for our return on investment and also again our time you know I would rather run a campaign uh, and where I can be found by millions of people uh, from the search engines and our uh, social media than walk around uh, neighborhoods or standing in front of a store all day passing out uh, cars and brochures but again, there's no right, right or wrong way. You know, you just have to do what's best for you. Cold calling all day, every day, and follow ups, and yes, brochures, trifolds. So yes, I use trifolds, brochures. Uh, I don't use biz cards anymore. Uh, all I do now is brochures. I love brochures. You can get more information. I've had customers that have actually ordered more services because of the other services that they see in my brochure usually when you give a customer a business card they look at it you know i've seen customers lose business cards within five minutes of being in the house but when you get customers those brochures i tell you guys it's a great feeling when you're cleaning and you're sitting uh and, and the customer sitting on the couch and they're looking through your brochure um, and nine out of 10, they're probably interested in other services that you provide. Because again, I've had a, lots of customers that have asked me about uh, upholstery cleaning. So I love brochures. I don't even use business cards anymore. My business is strictly brochures. Actually, I just order another thousand brochures through my, um, my graphic and web designer, Kim Massingale. Uh, very, very good person. Uh, I'm not sure how to price rooms yet. I don't want to charge them too much since I'm just starting. Um, Corey, again, understand your market, understand your ideal customer. Who are you marketing to? Okay, because again, your price will dictate who 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 you're gonna attract, and there's just everything. That's just the way this world works when it comes to uh prices okay um that's why people go out here and buy certain things because again of the price you have some people that will go spend a hundred thousand dollars on a car you have some people who want to spend ten thousand on the car uh so both companies are going to sell a car but again that price uh is basically going to dictate who is going to use your services or, or product but at the same time it goes back to Building value in your business. How do people see your business? So if you have no value in your business, um, there's a very high risk of charging uh, a higher price. And again, this goes back to your market. Um, what 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 is your market saying? You know, my market. I'm hitting. Uh, I'm hitting my peak with my prices because I am the highest price cleaner. In my area now, I'm not the highest price cleaner by much, maybe by 10 15 percent of other cleaners, but I am hitting that peak where I get enough customers that turn down my services or don't use my service because of price. But I have more customers that use my services because of value, they see the value in my business. Um, so, you know, you just have to, that, that is something you're just going to have to, um, just kind of, you know, play with. I'm not, I, I hate to say the word play, but you're going to have to test, you're going to have to test the market. But again, uh, you shouldn't have to do too much testing if you build your business with value, um, and you have certain things that speak value about you and your business instead of price. So the first thing I would do is um, see what your other, see what other companies are charging. And um, and again, when you see those other companies, you can see why they charge that. So, you know, when you got to charge $10 and you see his van, you, he, you see him, you see his setup, 
Now you see why he charged ten dollars. But then you see a guy that's charging fifty dollars. Now you see why he charged fifty dollars. So again, it goes both ways. Um, you charge fifty dollars because of the value that you have, and you charge ten dollars because of the value you don't have. So all you can do is just throw out a price and hope and pray that someone calls you because you are cheap. So um, I would say uh, study your market, see what other cleaners are charging. And um, the best advice I can give you like now is build value. If you have no value in your business, uh, you just need to put food on the table. You just need to make money and pay bills. You might have to be competitive because again, you have no other, no other choice. You have no other route to go. Uh, but at the same time, that that shouldn't hold you back from start build for, to, to start building value in your business um and if you don't you need to start doing it asap um educate yourself uh network um all these things man they just play a part but the first thing you need to do is educate yourself um because that's one of the most um that's probably the biggest mistake that I see most people in this industry is they don't educate themselves. They just, again, buy a piece of equipment and that's the only value they have is they have equipment. And again, equipment does not speak value. It's just a piece of equipment. Um, so again, guys, uh, we talked about name recognition, quality, customer service, becoming a problem solver. And again, education, which you're going to hear me talk about a lot this year. Um, and the next thing after name recognition is your online presence. Where this is 2019, just like a lot of you guys look at me on Google and Facebook, I also look at a lot of you guys. And I will say, some of you guys, when I go to your website, when I go to your Facebook page, you have no online presence. So how do you expect customers to find you? How do you expect customers to know who you are if you have no presence? That's why I'm always on top of my online presence. You know, and again, my customers are, and clients are starting to recognize this. I was at a client's home yesterday and him and his wife just praised me because they, man, you always, man, every time they follow me on Instagram and also Facebook, they say, man, every day you have videos coming up. I told them, my camera, my phone, it's just not a phone. That's, that's a tool. This is my job. That's my job. Every day I'm in the field, every day that I'm working, I'm putting up videos. I'm putting up YouTube videos. I'm putting up Facebook videos. I'm putting up videos on Instagram, pictures on Instagram. Um... Uh, also yesterday, I just found out that I did a, uh, a video yesterday with a few members, uh, coach rich and also Jeffrey Toblin out of Utah. We did a video, did a great, wonderful educational video last night about Google. Now you can create posts on Google and you can also take some of those posts and upload one minute videos. So I did a few videos of me cleaning and create posts out of them. Um, uh, again, Building an online presence, reviews, uh, a, a, a website. Um, so, guys, again, we, we live in an era where most people just don't like to read, uh, but people still like to research. When they research, guys, that's how they find things. That's how we find things. When we go to resorts, when we go on vacation, uh, when we buy cars, it, Everything that I buy, guys, I bought when I bought my car, I found it online. <laughs> you know, um, any, everything, you know, almost everything that we consume, we find it online. So how can you go out here and buy someone else's product or use someone else's services, but you're in business and no one can do the same for you? So, guys, you have to find, I'm not going to say you have to, you must. That is something you, you must do is have an online presence. All right. And, and what's going to happen is if you don't, when the next big thing come, you're going to be so far behind. Now it's going to be hard for you to catch up on that. And I've seen it happen a lot with guys get into this. You know, they get so comfortable. They get comfortable with what's working now. So um, that's why, again, I continue to get online reviews. I am all like I said, I'm always doing videos. I'm all I'm staying on top of my online presence every day. Um, I'm. You know, using certain keywords, key terms, 
um, so I can be found for whatever key search like, that potential customer is looking for. So, guys, you have to have an online presence. It's not something that you should have. It's something that you must have. If you're in the service industry, unless you live in some part of this country or this world where people just find you because you look so good or you just do something that some of some we don't know what you're doing you know that's fine and dandy but i know that's not real so since that that's not real guys is get on your online presence okay there's no reason you should not have a facebook business page you know how many people go on facebook every day you know how many people are on facebook okay millions and millions and millions of people are on facebook millions and millions of people get on google millions and millions of people get on youtube all those potential customers you are not you're just missing out on someone said you think thumbtack uh i'm not here to say what is and what isn't a ripoff again i've never used thumbtack but what i will say is i've heard some people say they have good success with it and they have had some people say they had bad success with it again guys when it comes to marketing try it for yourself if I would if I would have listened to everybody, I probably wouldn't be in front of you guys right now because of people telling me that AdWords didn't work. It was a ripoff. That's what we guys used to tell. Them. Oh, it's a ripoff. It's a ripoff. You know, I say, well, it can't be that much of a ripoff if I see people using it every day. You know why most things become a ripoff to us in our business? You know why, guys? Because again, we build no value. One thing we can do is depend on the price. And next thing you know, we're becoming these price wars. So when we lose a job, we use, we lose a potential customer over a price. Now it's a ripoff. So once you build value in your business, you learn and find ways to separate yourself. You find ways to separate your business. Now it's not a ripoff. So um, um, I get so many messages, guys. And I will say this. Oh, man. Ah. I will say this uh, to my followers that follow me. If you email me, you call me. Uh, if I don't answer, uh, I do my best. But again, you guys see that I work all the time. So I'm in the field just like you guys. Uh, so don't get offended and don't get upset if you see that I don't answer uh, your call or if I don't answer your email because I get, I just get, I get a lot, guys, every day. I do my best to uh, try to get back to you guys, uh, but that's why I will be doing my seminar this April. It will be April the 19th. I uh, will be doing having Kim create my uh, my postcard, uh, uh, online uh, postcard for it, and I will, you know, uh, show it online. I'm going to have uh, Br Bruce DeLoach there. Uh, he's the IRC certification teacher and also he teaches other things i actually had a chance to talk to him today about it so it's going to be a pretty good networking event and it's going to be april the 19th but just keep your eyes and opens your your, your uh your uh ears and uh eyes open so when you uh when i present it and i put it out there by the end of the month uh you guys will be able to get prepared for it so uh but you know again when it comes to marketing you just you guys just try it just try it um I think someone just said something about next door. Now, next door is more of a uh, referral source. I get a lot of customers. And I say a lot of customers, a lot of good customers off of next door. Uh, because again, I had this one lady, man, I did last year. Her name was uh, Mrs. Carpenter. And she was up in the Alpharetta area. And that's a pretty good high-end, middle-class, high-end area. And guys, I'm going to tell you, man, it was like, you know, it was like a like Steph Curry, man. I was on fire. This lady was giving me so many referrals. And I noticed that I was going in the same neighborhood. And I was asking these customers, well, how did you hear about me? Oh, uh, Miss Carpenter, n n the next week. How did you hear about me? I'm in Africa. Miss Carpenter. Man, this lady had sent me almost like nine referrals, man, in like two months. And I and man, I had to go to the uh I had to go to the pharmacy. I got a hundred dollar gift card and I sent it to her. And even when I sent it to her, guys, she called me. She was like, Courtney, you didn't have to do that. Um, you know, because again, those customers, you know, she appreciates me 
just as well as I appreciate her because actually she had used the cleaner before she used me and she told me she said the last cleaner she's I'm gonna be honest with you he was he worked so fast she said her carpets were wet for like two days and uh and and unfortunately I did know the cleaner and I called and told him um because again hopefully it could have helped him you know, find out why he might not be getting repeats and referrals. So I told that cleaner that I know, um, and he knew exactly. He said, yep, she's in my system. And, uh, but that customer, man, just, you know, again, you know, uh, building quality, uh, again, your customer service skills. And these are the things, problem solvers. So obviously the other cleaner did not pro uh, solve her problem and she went somewhere else and she found me. And now she has become a great great client um for my business so again um take care of your clients because you know again your customer service how's your customer service skills how, how are you a problem solver so uh so yeah guys a uh, few more things uh what else to talk about um uh, what else Presentation, you know, again, your presentation that's going to go uh, again. Your presentation, basically, I, when I say presentation is I get this a lot. And that's why if you guys watch me, uh, you guys follow me. You see in my videos, I'm always going uh, above. I'm, I'm always going, just trying to go higher and higher to I just can't go anymore with my presentation. And when I say that is that my Cilador my corner guards, even my floor mats. I had a customer yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, my first customer, she was a new customer, found me on Google. Not only did she leave me a five-star review, I thought that's my mouth, sorry guys. Not only did she leave me a five-star review, she also took pictures of my setup and also the carpets before and after, and she put those pictures on Google for me. One of the pictures, guys, was a picture of my Cilador, and my floor mats that I got two weeks ago. So that speaks a lot. That again, guys, that's the value that I'm bringing to my business, you know, because again, I want to do things that most are not willing to do. So when your customers uh, notice that and they see that, that's the value they see. When a customer pays me, guys, I guarantee you 99% of the time when a customer pays me, they're so excited about the services they just received that the, 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 the thought of the money they just spent, they're not thinking about it. They're not thinking about the money they just paid me. They're thinking about the experience. That's why she took the pictures and uploaded them on Google. That's why she wrote the review because of her experience. So presentation, go above and beyond for your customers because not only are you doing your customers a favor, guys, you're also doing yourself a favor. Because again, this is how this is why customers are going to refer you. This is why customers are going to be wild by you. This is why customers are now going to turn into clients. This is why customers are going to be excited to use you again because of your presentation, because you have you you have built value in your business. So that's why I do the things that I do. The cellar doors, the corner guards, the floor mats, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the runners, uh, bringing in a microfiber towel, wiping up every piece of water that I drip on the floor. Again, your presentation. It, see, and it, that, that's my new thing, guys. That's my new, that's my new motto of 2019. It's deeper than just the cleaning. It, it, it's more than just the cleaning. Yes, we all can just pull hoses in and spray some solution on the carpet and suck it up. But again, if we all did that, what makes us different? What makes customers want to want to choose us one from the other? So that's why it goes back to building value in your business. And that's one of the best ways to build value in your business. Once you get into the customer's homes, your presentation. What, what are you presenting to the customer besides just a cleaning? Because I was telling a guy this today. Uh, when I was at TCS, and, and, and guys understand that this is how tricky it is. If a customer pays me $250 to clean five rooms, and another customer pays another cleaner $100 to clean five rooms, 
both of those customers are expecting the same quality job. And this is the trick. This is the funny part. And we all know this is cleaners. Most of the time, the customer that's paying the less is expecting more. So what I'm saying is that, you know, where's the value of you working for someone for a low price? You know, there, you know, there's no value in it for you as a cleaner, as a business owner. Now the value is in it for them, but what about you? Because no one is, I have never had a customer. When I was a low ball cleaner, I never had a customer that say, hey, Courtney, even though you're cleaning, I know you're cleaning the five rooms for a hundred bucks, so I'm not expecting a, a, a great job. I'm not expecting a good job. Those are the same customers that you will pour your, your heart and soul out into that job, and it will be that one stain that don't come out, and, and, and that's what they will, that's what they will be disappointed about because you will, you will, I mean, you will get those carpets looking like night and day. But that one stain that don't come out, that's exactly what they will point out. So again, guys, that's why when you build value in your business instead of just price, now you know there's that's why I don't focus. That's why the one of the best feelings about being in business is understanding that everybody's not your customer. That's one of the best feelings, guys, when you're in business for yourself. Everyone is not your customers. That's why when guys, I hear guys say, I want to work for everybody. I want all the money. I laugh at it because it's ignorance. How 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 can you get all the money? It, I mean, if that was true, Ruth Chris will offer you a state for five dollars, but they don't. If that was true, BMW will have a car for ten thousand dollars, but they don't. If that was true, McDonald's will have a hamburger for thirty dollars, but they don't because they understand everybody is not their customer. Why? Because of the value they have built into their business. McDonald's, what's the value of going to McDonald's or any fast food chains? Convenience. That's, that's why they can give you a meal for 5 or $10 because it's fast and it's cheap and it's convenient. Okay? You go to Ruth Chris and they bring your steak out in 5 or 10 minutes. You would not expect that. You, you, when you go to those kind of restaurants, you expect to sit down have a nice conversation with your wife or your girlfriend or whoever while you're drinking uh, your beverage or whatever you're drinking, eating your appetizer. Because you know it's going to be uh, 20, 30, 45 minutes before you get your, your meal. You, you know that when you go to these places. So when you go to these places, it's not about convenient. It's about everything else, the presentation. The presentation of the building, you know, again, the name recognition. Why do you think some companies don't market? When have you seen a Ruth Chris commercial? In my part of town, I have never seen a Ruth Chris uh, TV commercial. I have never seen a Lamborghini commercial. Why? Because the name speaks for itself. It's that simple, guys. So uh, two more things uh, before I end this video. Passion. You have to have a passion for it. Anything that you do, you have to have a passion for it. That's why we can look at certain people and, man, you know, like, for example, I, I, guys, I get, I like my mind, like, wow, when I see guys working out, when I see guys lifting weights, and not only are they lifting weights, but the passion they have for it. That's what keeps you going. That's what keeps you striving. That's what keeps you growing, building, understanding, educating yourself. You know, when you see guys, you know, when I watch some of these guys on YouTube, uh, bodybuilders, these guys know it down to a science. They know exactly what body group to work, when to work it, how much to work it, what to eat. To repair their muscle, what supplements to take to 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 do whatever their body needs to do for them to get the results that they want because of the passion they have about it. That's why some people can go to the gym for two weeks and never go back because they have no passion for it. There's no passion in it. That's why I do what I do. That's why when guys ask me, 
Why do you help people? Why do you do videos? Because it's my passion. And it will come back in tenfolds. But again, I do it because of the passion I have, not only to help other people, but also cleaning. I enjoy cleaning. I love cleaning. I've been doing this since I was 19 years old. And it's, to this day, it's my passion. It's what I enjoy doing. And guess what? When you have a passion for it, people will see that. They will recognize that. And that will make them feel happy for you. I have customers tell me all the time, man, you just enjoy what you do. Yes, I do. I do enjoy what I do. I love what I do. I appreciate what I do because I have a passion for what I do. And the reason why I have a passion for it, guys, is the last thing on my list. Motivated. I'm motivated. I'm motivated to do what I do every day, all day. I'm, I'm motivated to do these videos. I'm motivated to give my customers the best services that they have ever had. I'm motivated to make sure my business stand out the best way possible I can do for my business. I'm motivated to have the best equipment that I can afford. I'm motivated to have the best tools that I can have to my assets. I'm motivated to keep educating myself. I'm motivated to help others. I'm motivated to live a better life for myself, for my family. I'm motivated to see other cleaners do better in their business. And all that comes with self-motivation. You can watch me all you want. You can watch this video. You can agree with this video all you want. The best thing you can do is when you watch me, guys, is to be inspired. Because you, you can be motivated by somebody, but if you're not watching that person every day, if you're not... If that person is not there with you every step of the way, eventually that motivation is going to run out. So what's the best motivation that we can do for ourselves? Self-motivation. Find a way to motivate yourself. And that's what I have done in my business is find ways and find a way to motivate myself. I don't look for motivation from anybody else. I look to be inspired by other people. I'm inspired by a lot of people, a lot of people in this world, and even a lot of cleaners that have inspired me. Mark Sager, Chandler Thompson, Bob Pruitt. A lot of these guys have inspired me to be better at what I do. But it's up to me to keep myself motivated. So all I'm telling you guys is that when you see Courtney, when you see whoever you watch, just be inspired by it that you can become better at what you do because you see someone else doing it. But self-motivation is what's going to keep your fire burning every day. I can't keep your fire burning every day. I only can keep my fire burning. You have to keep your own fire burning. And the only way you're going to do that is through self-motivation you have to find a way to motivate yourself so if you want a better business if you want to live a better lifestyle if you want a car it might be i mean the the, the world has so many opportunities and so many things out here to our assets that's why i never get caught up in people saying what we should buy what we should own guys you have one life to live as far as we know it and everything in this world is, 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 is for our assets. It, 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 it's available to us. So who am I to tell somebody what they should or should not have? That's why so many people never reach their potential. Because again, they're not even self-motivated themselves. So when they're not self-motivated, when somebody is, they'll do their best to knock you down, to bring you down to their level. Everything in this world is available to us, no matter if it's a house, a car, money, whatever, whatever you want, a better business. I, and, and again, me as Courtney, I do everything my way. And, you know, 
It is what it is. I have guys that say all the time, oh, man, you should be a multi-truck operation. Why? Why should I be a multi-truck operation? Because somebody else said it? No. If I'm not self-motivated to have, be a multi-truck operation, why would I do it? Why do that to myself? Knowing that's not what I want. Knowing that's not what, what my vision has for me. My vision is not to be a multi-truck operation. So I follow my vision. I follow what I see in my head. I can't go and what everybody else tell me because if I was to do what everybody else tell me, guys, I'd be all over the place. Courtney, you should be doing this. Courtney, you should be doing that. Courtney, you should be doing that. Guys, stop listening to people telling you what you should do. Because now that I've seen those same people telling you what you should do, they're probably not even doing anything themselves. It's funny how people can always tell you what to do with your life and do with your business when they don't have a life of business themselves. They're just walking around just doing nothing. So the best advice I can get to you guys, even if this business is not for you, if you're in this business, still be the best you can be. Because if this business, if you're not going to be in this business, let's say even next year, still be the best you can be while you're in it because there are valuable lessons that you can learn being in this business that can probably help you in your next, you know, journey, you know, uh, of business and life. So whatever you do, guys, be the best at it. Do it right, you know. And like I said, build value in yourself and build value in your business. Once you learn to build value in yourself, you learn to build value in your business. Guys, now as professionals, now as service providers, we don't have to always focus on price. That's why you have people that go out here and buy things because they're not focused on price. That's why you have people that go out here and spend fifty, hundred thousand dollars just on a watch. Yes, all watches do the exact same thing. They all tell you the time. But you have people out here that see the value in owning a watch for a hundred grand. And again, who are we to tell them that is right or wrong? All right, YouTube, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, more videos to come, but they're going to do it for tonight. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.